Welcome to another video in my classic series. Today we are going to talk about the low key lighting. Low key lighting means I have a lot of dark area in my image. It does not mean I am the image is underexposed. It really means it's just it has a lot of things that are hidden in the shadows. So let's start with an easy setup. So as you can see, I've got one strobe light here and a model. And now what I'm trying to do first is to get rid of the light of the background. I can do this either by placing the model closer to the camera or, and this is the way I prefer, to bring the light actually behind the model. And as you can see here in the rendering, there are already shadows that are formed by the shape of the model and this brings a lot of graphic stuff into the image so you get a lot of lines and a lot of shadows and these uh, fine lines of of light and this is actually the stuff that makes low key lighting so interesting so speaking about this um what i'm seeing a lot is that people are doing it like this so it's that's an underexposed image so there is not a lot of light going on there is nothing going on with the shapes this is just one light that's just not bright enough and so uh, the whole image just looks dull and this is not not a very nice setup so bring the light behind the model and turn up the power so you get these nice lines. However, in this example, I'm using a normal reflector. And as you can see, I got these bright spots here. And then the rest of the model is basically uh, in a gradient, hidden in a gradient. So I prefer to actually use um, a strip light for as a light modifier. And that way I get um, way more even distributed light or moving it further away um, that, that will also work. So if I'm using um, instead of the, um, where is it? Here is it, the strip light. So going down in the light sources and here let's use the 30 by 90 strip light. So as you can see, instantly this is a more even look and I can bring it closer to the model. But make sure it's not in the frame, obviously. Also make sure your lens is clean so you don't get flares or something like this. And so that way I can really bring these lines to life. So the next step is to make sure the model is posing in a way so it creates um, interesting shapes so this one is probably not really good because that hand is hidden and I mean in the end the lines in that image actually they don't make sense so let's just jump into the poses for this model so we can just scroll through it and then we will have a look at the lines that we're seeing. So I'm looking for these lines in the legs here and in the arms mainly. So as you can see here, we have this parallel um, lines, which is actually pretty nice. But then I also got this shadow here, which I think is mm, distracting and that arm looks weird. So probably not going into something like um, this pose also here you have to really be careful because hands in front of the body will create shadows and arms behind the body will definitely also be hidden in the shadow so I can show you something if I move this arm here just a little bit um, like this bring it to the front then suddenly there is um, the light appears here 
So I get another line. And so this is basically what I'm telling the, the model to to move a little bit, to move the arm up, to bring the elbow to the front and stuff like this. So this is pretty, um, um, you need to communicate with the model because the model can't see what you're actually doing and what is what the light is actually doing because from the point of view of the model, it's not possible to see the changes in light. So um, I made some stuff. So this is something that I really like. I, th I think that brings out the model shape very well. Also, if you put this into black and white, it's really, really nice. And because of the light is in such a um, harsh angle, it really makes shapes on, creates shapes, creates shadows here in every uh, part of the uh, body, every part of the image. Also, this is something that I really like because I have that light here on the leg and it creates one line with the arm. This is something I really like. Or you can also do it as like parallel. So you got these three lines that are parallel. So this is this is the stuff that I'm looking for. I'm always trying to avoid things where arms are hidden because it always looks a little bit weird. And if I go into the poses, I can, um, again, go into the poses and just do some, have a look at some stuff that looks weird. This one is weird because the back is not visible, so you don't see what's going on. And yeah, it is not as easy to pose the model. The lighting is actually pretty simple because you just need one light source. And as soon as the light source is in place, it's actually pretty easy um, because you can really focus on the model and and on these light edges. And this is really, it's really interesting to create these shapes, you know, and this is the stuff that I really love when doing low key lighting. So a lot of stuff is going on here. Um, some people try to um, create a second light source in uh, low light photography. So if you want to, you can also bring in second light source so you get a little bit of light on the back it's still the same thing because you still get these lines so i would always start with the main light source and then if you want to you can bring in a second light source just for the look and if you're really fancy then you can go with a something like a gel that brings in a little bit of color so this is also something that i really <clears throat> like to do so i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you've learned something again and um, if you want to leave a comment or a like and um, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more about this lighting setups uh, this was for now the last one of the classic series and next one is about color theory and lighting. This is going to be interesting because this is one of my favorite topics. So make sure to ring the bell to don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Have a nice day. This was Stefan for Satellite.